Hello. In today's show, we've gone consumer test bonkers and have the best pies to share with you. A kitchen cupboard brimming with good advice for vegetarians. And we have some fab news about two of life's supreme pleasures, chocolate and wine. But first of all, we could all like to take a little more care of our backs. Even the most mundane thing, like picking up the kids or washing up, can cause a strain. Mary Parkinson's here with some valuable advice on how to hold on to a healthy back. Mary. Right, we have Julie and Jordan here today. Welcome to discuss back pain, really, which is one of the most common pains in the country. Absolutely. I mean, pretty much everybody has or will have back pain at some point in their lives. <laughs> yes, that's you. <laughs> and, you know, the easiest thing, again, as we did, you know, with the stomach exercises, correcting your posture, tightening, just standing up. Julie, if you'd like to just stand up with me, too. Again, you know, in everyday life, with it, when you're just standing up, we're doing the washing up, you're doing the housework, whatever you're doing, if you, again, just tip your hips underneath and tighten your stomach. Is posture something you only think about when you're standing? I mean, is it there are bad sitting positions, presumably, Absolutely, as well? too. I mean, you know, the majority of people do sedentary jobs. And actually, when you're sitting, your knees and ankles should be at 90 degrees and sitting up straight. It's so when you're driving, if your lower always... back can be supported in your car. If it's not, get a car support. Yeah. You know, get some form of support for it. I mean, just simple things like that. I mean, who hasn't got out of the car after a long car journey? I thought, my back. Exactly, yeah. You know. And we all sit over computers and yeah. we're at housework and stuff like this. We're always stooping. Yeah. OK, so we're going to do something simple like picking up the washing up. How would you advise Julie to do that with the best possible... Well, to her back. again, I mean, if she's doing the washing up, again, it's just, you know, have one foot in front of the other and stomach tight. And so you're not slumped over the right. kitchen sink. And uh, even more so when you're doing something like picking up the shopping. Yeah. Again, the majority of people, when they pick up shopping, tend to walk with their shopping bags like this. Are you, are you um, somebody who does bad posture when you're washing up and when you're picking up shopping? I mean, have you made mistakes? I never concentrate on my posture when I'm shopping. OK, let's put this shopping <laughs> down and let Julie pick it up and let's have a look. So don't think about your posture at the moment. Think, how would you pick it up normally? And what, what's wrong with this, Mary? I mean, so again, I mean, again? The, the strain is all coming on her wrists. The, her the arms elbows. aren't working at all, the wrists and the elbows, and thus into the back as well. If you can flick the plastic over to the, the palms of your hands and lock out the arms slightly, you, then the arms are working. That takes the strain off your back too. Can you feel a difference there? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly... And if you have them slightly more relaxed than that, so you're not sort of walking around. Right. <laughs> and when she actually went to pick them up, she just bent straight over. Yes. No, again, I mean, if you're going down to pick anything up from shopping, that's not particularly heavy, but quite often when you've trekked out of Sainsbury's with the weekend shop or whatever, you know, whichever... Mm you know, high street store you use, or you're picking up a kid, you're picking up boxes, again, you bend from the knees. OK. Well, yes. the easiest way to pick out your back is to bend straight over. Well, and look, if we pick Jordan up, because we've got two equally balanced bags yeah. here, which is a bit yeah. of a cheat. Now, something like Jordan, who is going to be wriggling about and you can only pick up on one side. So, Julie, if you pick Jordan up, mm -hmm. you obviously pick him up. Well, let's have a look at how you do that. The wrong way. Oh. Yes, now you see, this is probably the most common cause of back problems for young mums. If you see there, Julie has got Jordan on one hip and her hip is pushed out. Right. This is pushing her whole back. Right. out at the moment. If you'd like to pop Jordan down again, and this time when you pick him up, hold him as close to the, the centre of you as possible. Again, bend your knees as you go down. So you're bending... And then you hold Jordan to the front. Now you see there, he, the weight is equally distributed, her hips aren't out at all, and he's much easier to carry like that. I mean, it is hard, though, because the tendency oh, is that you have the car. Well, if you're that way around. Oh, um, yeah, so he's, he's an equal distribution yeah, of weight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's a much, much better way is to carry your child. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And so when you see people with these baby carriers on the back and yeah. on the front, then that's, again... That is a much, much more sensible way of carrying a child than stuck right. over one hip as it normally is. OK, well, if you want to come back to Jordan's that nice and comfy there now, aren't you? <laughs> so this is a problem for most of us in the country. There's more working hours lost through back pain than through anything else. Yeah. So can you actually correct it, like, with exercise? Yes, uh, there are loads and loads of back exercises now. If you have any back pain, though, please go and get checked out by your doctor. Right. You know, you may need to... See, I'm a personal trainer, and if anybody has any back problems, I always send them off to their doctor or an osteopath to get themselves sorted out before they, before they 
take on any exercise with me. But I'll just show, should we just do a couple of quick exercises? They're really, really easy. Right. Julie, if you could go down on the floor on, on all fours. That's a good boy. Um, what's mummy, what's she doing? Good, hands under your shoulders, knees slightly apart. Now just breathing in, drop your chin to your chest Come and draw back your- towards me, Julie, so we can see. That into the line, that's it. That's right, great. okay. Now draw your belly bone to your spine and drop your chin to your chest and breathe in. Breathe in, arch your back right up. Good, that's it. And that actually is actually quite relaxing to yes. the bottom of the back. Yes, this is just easing up. This is more a mid-back exercise than yep. anything else. Now flatten again. Breathe out and flatten. Okay. And breathe in again. Hold it for a count of four. And flatten. Good. Right. And that is just a mid-back mobiliser that anybody can do anyway. You can even do it standing up with your hands on your knees. And now we'll just and do it. the next exercise is what, on the back? No, this one is on is lying on your front and it's a back okay. it's a back, so an a actual back that. strength yep. now, Julie. If you could just go down. And come back towards me, Julie, as we can. There we go. <laughs> and and make room for your, you over here. There you turn go. Turn your right Wonderful. hand into a fist and rest your he head on it awesome. and stretch your left hand out in front of you and just slightly spread your legs. Oh, we'll move out the way, Jordan, over here. And then lifting on the diagonal, lift your okay. left hand and your right leg. Or is it the other way? So around? it's across the body. Yeah. And, and you presumably do the other side as well? Relax, yes. And lift again. And how long do you hold it for? About a count of four. Yeah. And down. And Brilliant. relax. And this is really strengthening the lower back. Is that good for you, Julie? Yeah. Does that, does that feel like it's helping? Yeah. Well, if you want to come back up onto the sofa, we can see your face. Thank you both very much. Thanks, Mary. Right. <laughs> now, Nigel, the producer, was calling you spineless backstage, but uh, we don't believe a word of it, do we, Jordan? Honest. Spineless? Me spineless? Well, anyway, sorry, enough. <laughs> now, there was a time when veggies were sneered at. In fact, people used to cross the road to get out of their way. However, in the 90s, more and more people are turning to vegetarian dishes for healthy alternative ideas, and also some of them are quite cheap to produce. Claire Connery's been delving deep into her kitchen store cupboard for vegetarian dishes that actually taste good. Haven't you, Claire? And why shouldn't they taste good? Well, because there is a bit of a, an argument that, you know, the old nut cutlet and everything has brown rice in it and is a bit dull. And I think that's what people really have against vegetarian uh, food. You see, I think what has happened over the years, Nigel, is that people didn't really realise what healthy food was. But now we know what healthy food is. If you can remember my baskets and the bits of my How store How could I forget covered, your baskets? I'm getting tied up to the basket. <laughs> In this basket, I've got everything that everybody eats. So we've got the bread, the cereals, the grains, the pulses, the high fibre foods and yep. the potatoes, of course, as well. In this one, we've got the same as everyone else. We've got the fruit and the vegetables, canned, fresh, whatever. And the change comes uh -huh. with the next two. But it doesn't come in a very major way. Because if you remember, when I've been talking to you about all the other sort of ways in which we can eat and the sort of store cupboards we can have and the healthiness of food, these two baskets were the ones that were the most important. They're the most important for the vegetarian as well. So that's why they've had it right for a very long time. I think it was maybe the rest of us that had it wrong. Oh, I'm sure. And maybe the way it was marketed and things I like th that. I yeah, think, yeah. yes, the whole attitude has changed so much and food generally has become much more interesting. So these two areas are the changes. Now, if you're a pure vegetarian, a vegan, in fact, you're not going to eat any animal produce at all. Nope. So you're going to cut that out. However, there are some people who say that they're vegetarian and they do eat some cheese, they do eat dairy produce, and they do eat eggs. So you can have whatever you like around this area in the dairy line. For those that are totally vegan, then you can add the soya products and the soya milk right. so that you're still getting that protein that you need that's very important. And you've got to eat all the other things as well in lots of different varieties so that you get the balance. The other thing where it really differs is in the protein content. As I've said, you will have your soya protein, you'll have textured vegetable protein as well, and these can now be made into all sorts of interesting ingredients that appear along with soya made into tofu, which mm. is a sort of silken variety or a soft variety or a firm variety. You have your beans and your lentils and your pulse vegetables, all of which will give you the protein that you won't get because you're not eating meat, fish and cheese. Yeah, the variety Perhaps. of, of, of foods is available is even better. I mean, I, always slightly ironic, but they actually you can have like sausage substitute because some people who converted to vegetarianism have, might miss the, the texture of meat or the, the idea that they're eating, eating meat. They want the healthier options. But that's always interesting that if people want to go and have what they think is a sausage, that they still can do. What about the, I mean, there's always that problem, isn't it? You change to a vegetarian diet and suddenly, first couple of weeks, you're a bit windy miller, aren't you? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> yes, you are. But, but there are products actually on the market which actually, if you go to a good health food shop, they get a couple of tablets and that problem all goes away or you just blame it on the dog. But you see, your body will get used to it as well. So once you change your diet, it's going to take it a number of weeks to settle in and then it will eventually calm down and yeah. you'll be all right and you'll not be a nuisance to your friends. No. And, and they'll allow you to come for dinner. Well, that's important, isn't it? Because, yes, you don't want to be banned to the patio. No. So, you see... Now, for vegetarians, you can buy ready-made meals using the textured vegetable protein as well as the soya. And in addition to that, you can also use those as the basis for other meals. Yeah. I'm going to concentrate on something which really uses mainly the vegetables and the, the fibre from the uh, pastas and grains. Because I'm going to do a stir-fry for oh, you. Oh, let's concentrate on the Austin. And I, I think it's fantastic because if it's going to be out of the store cupboard, this is somewhere else where the vegetarian store cupboard may change very slightly, in that you will probably have a lot more fruit and vegetables than a normal store cupboard for other people who are, not eat who are eating meat as well. Right. So that you have all sorts of varieties. And stir-fry is a superb way of using up the leftovers as well as creating something from foods that you buy. And quite good exercise in the kitchen, lifting knees. <laughs> Things, yes, quite I'm, heavy, I'm, it's very, there. very heavy. Argue. Yes, got to watch this your back. We've been talking about that. <laughs> how, to lift, yes. how to lift your wonks. Yes, and you need yeah. to be careful because it also gets hot yeah. on the handles yeah. because yeah. this one is a cast iron one. What I've got in here, and I always put in to start with, is some onion, some garlic, and I've also used some ginger. And a bit of, what's the oil so you're I'm, using today? I'm I know you have a variety of oils. Yes, I'm using a sesame, sesame oh, oil, which sesame. is a you see that the oils are so lovely, yeah. and it's a vegetable oil. Yeah. Therefore, it's perfectly suitable for vegetarians. Yeah. For stem ginger, what I like to do with it is to buy it in the root ginger and you just take a small knife and you just pare it off yeah. so that you're taking it right down like that until it's completely peeled and then you cut it into slivers and it ends up looking like that. Okay. So I'm keeping it sort of fine. Now I have that in softening of the garlic which I've done exactly the same thing with. So both strong, you're turning your nose up again. No, I, I, had a, I had a nibble. It's very strong That's in the, that form. It's, it's hot. It? Yeah, it is hot. It's, it's like chilli or paprika. Yeah, yeah, Not I'd... quite as strong as chilli but it is hot. And then you start putting in with your good hot pan and for wok cooking you do have everything very hot so we have <coughs> a high heat and then whatever ingredients you want and this is a lovely one because I'm using four of everything you can yep. use six of everything yep. but it's a good balance I'm using some beans uh, that the French sometimes call bobby beans or Kenyan beans they go in because they take quite a long time Le bobby beans or le yeah. possibly yeah. <laughs> You, this is the funny man, there's no doubt about it. Is he bigger than me? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. He's probably about my size, but right. he packs a good punch. So just be careful. <laughs> I haven't met your brother, but I'm looking forward to it. So right. it's the beans are in, first of all, and on the heat, just stir. After that, let's say the, the broccoli is going to, because of the, the base, it's going to take a while to okay. cook through that. So get that but in. with, with yeah. any stir-fry, you don't want the vegetables to be soft and mushy and losing their colour. You want to have them tossed in the pan. Yeah. And the only thing about this pan is that you've got to do the tossing. You can't actually lift it and go right. like that the way you can with the traditional no, Chinese. With the long wooden handle. But it's great. Quite good. That's okay. right. They're very handy. So that's that in. Next I'm going to put in some mushrooms. Great. This will serve about four or six. Again, it depends on how good an appetite you have. Yeah. And keep going. Yeah. And just toss so that the little bit of oil that's in there gets well tossed round. Okay, we've moved some, it on. Got about a minute. Some celery. Oh, on this. I, know, I, know. I thought this was going to be quick. Well, we, some we've too. just been invading time. We've done so well. This this is what happens then. You see, with this sort of cookery, we then start to chuck everything. Gets Peppers, going in. Little baby corn. That's great. I don't have to talk at all. Little spring onions. And some spring onions, yeah. all about Chopped. inch, inch and a half length. Okay. And just get the whole lot in. And then on the plate, Nigel, I've got some liquid that's going to go in there as well. Yep. Now, I'd like to cook this a little bit longer, but since we're a bit short okay. of time, I'm going to just start adding the liquids. What have we got? I've got some soy sauce, about two to three tablespoonfuls. Yeah. Mm, it's that's wonderful, awesome. isn't it? Some barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. So that, what, is, what is that base? Is Which it spicy? Is, it's, a, it's really spicy and some soy in it and yeah. some sweetness in it. A lot of soy it. and so, yeah, like And I'm going to put some more sweetness. sweetness into it because I'm going to add some sugar. Brown you can sugar. leave that out if you're feeling awfully healthy. I'm going to put about two tablespoonfuls of rice wine. Rice wine. Again, you can leave that out. And some water. Okay. Sesame seeds aren't going in just yet. Those right. are going to go sprinkle on the top. I might have to finished. taste this properly mm. in the break, but in the meantime, I'm going and to. Got, uh, you're going you, to have a wee taste now. Yeah. And then that's going to go. You see, the colour is lovely. It's just worked out beautifully. Ooh, hot. We'll swap plates here. Very hot. I have hot. some whole grain rice. 
I'm going to come back to that and give my verdict on it, but it looks gorgeous. Well, I keep stirring, though. You keep stirring, because uh, time now for a bit of a short break. Get the kettle on. But stay tuned for great news if you love chalk and red wine. Yeah. Welcome back. In a minute, we'll be showing you how red wine and chocolate can be healthy. Hoorah! But it's now time for our consumer caped crusader. She likes dressing up. Charlotte Hindle, who once again has been out there tasting the highs and the lows. What have you been up to? Well, I thought, I thought I'd see Coke and see, Cola, sorry, and, and see actually if you can tell the difference and which ones taste the best. And it has been interesting because they are different, very different. Um, right, this is the first one. This is Woolies, Woolworths. Now, this is very cheap, 29p from Woolworths. And yep. take a bit of oxygen in with it so you can I taste thought, yes, it. Yes, you're talking to a former about, wine merchant. Oh, well, sorry about the same um, the glass. But uh, <laughs> it's a bit thin, isn't it? And a bit thin and a bit watery, I'm afraid. Yes, so it it's, hasn't got any of the, the it's top of... dull. Yeah, what Coke is like yeah, cocoa or something like that yeah, it's in still. the back. Now, this is the more. Virgin Coke, obviously been uh, mm. hyped up a lot at the moment, but very fizzy. I mean, it's got much more sort of, uh, it's much more carbonated than the other ones. Yeah, it's a much more lively cola, isn't it? Very lively. I, I, I'm not too sure about it. I think it's all fizz and, mm. and not it much It still lacks any taste. real attack. I mean, yes. I like something that's going to excite your taste buds. Bit, and, uh, although it's better than number one. Favourite. Of course, these are all the diet versions. Yeah. These aren't the full yeah. body. These are the ones with the Doesn't with the mean they necessarily in. have to be that dull, though, does it? No, absolutely not. Okay. And Pepsi, I think, has a very distinct flavour. Okay. I mean... I hope you haven't got a cold. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, not yet, anyway. <laughs> I think that's an interesting taste. It's very caramelly. Mm. It's not as, I do like these actually because they're not as sweet and I find a lot of colas are a bit too sweet bit anyway. Too sweet. But well, that you has prefer got... the sweetener rather than the actual sugar. Yes, because it doesn't taste as mm. sweet. This is they are four. very very sweet though. The, but the Pepsi is good because it's got a caramelly and a herby sort of flavour. I, I, I quite like that. But this is the American style. Yeah. Doing our tasting. I quite like that. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's the most grown up. That we've come across. That's really that's, actually quite a sophisticated drink. Well, that's 27p, yeah. which uh, is again very reasonable. Much you cheaper than the Pepsi. You could drink that on its own, or you could slam a bit of alcohol in that as but, well. Oh well, what, whatever takes your fancy. Well, you never know. Last one. This is the. This is Coke. This is Diet Coke. I mean, I have to say, it was my favourite, even though it's the most expensive. Well, it's the same price as Pepsi, but I thought the balance of the carbonated, uh, the car, the the carbon dioxide, you know, the fizz of it and the flavour of it. It's not quite as caramelly as the Pepsi, but it's still got a bit of a herby taste to it. Not as watery as the cheaper ones. I have to say, I quite liked okay, it. OK, so that was yours, the oh, Diet Coca-Cola you liked, yeah. but I actually went for the American, American style, which I thought was the most sophisticated. Yes. So that's it. That's excellent. And thanks as ever, Charlotte Hindle, mm. for being a great... A Now, if like me, you're a complete chocoholic. Or if like me, you like a little tipple of red wine. We've got good news. Recent research shows that this combination can not only be good for the soul, but also the body. So with the help of top food journalist John Radford, we're about to eat, drink and test the theory that it's healthy. This is the sort of tasting test that people really enjoy. Now, <laughs> if you look at the combination, chocolate's always been one of the most difficult things to put a wine with. Most of us eat milk chocolate, which is very sweet, and so you drink a very sweet white wine with it. Right. But the scientists have said that plain chocolate is much better for us because it actually contains cocoa solids, which contain minerals, iron particularly, which is very good. Red wine has tannin, which takes all the fat out of the food. So the two together are really healthy. But the question we've got to address is, do they actually taste any good? Uh -huh. Now, so where's this the research is, from, John? Well, um, some research has been done at a place in a uh, university in southern France that was showed that the, the red wine is good for you, but of course they would say that, they wouldn't would, they? They would, yes. Um, and there's also a psychologist at the University of Reading who's proved that actually eating chocolate and drinking wine is good for you, even if it's bad in a health sense, it's good psychologically because it makes you feel good about yourself, you see. How much of it should you be drinking now? We all know that red wine's good well, to a certain extent. My doctor told me that uh, two glasses a day and everybody would live to be 100, so I think I'm going to live to be 600 on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 14 units or maybe yeah. 20. I mean, you have 21 units a week, so that's quite comfortable. Let's just try the chocolate, though. We've got four different sorts of... This is a very cheap supermarket wine, Portuguese about three pounds 50, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Smells very good. It's got a nice fruity flavour. Sarah, you want to have a... The first taste and yes, this is a bit. Got milk or dark first, John? Well, I think dark is the important. Dark's the one that's that's full and healthy and good for you. Right. right. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. so. What's the combination like? Well, I have some, it is got a bit of dark chocolate, which I like. That's kind of weird, isn't it? I think mm. some work needed on that one. Let's try the other one. Sorry, there's a world shortage, shortage of spittoons today. Have to drink this then. <laughs> this is um, a sparkling red wine from Bohemia yeah. in the Czech Republic. I discovered it last week and I thought this has got to be, if there is a red wine for chocolate, this has got to be the one. So just taste the wine first. Yeah. That's bottled sunshine. In fact, it's bottled summer, isn't it? It's an amazing, nice, vibe, great mousse. Amazing, and from the mm. Czech Republic, which yeah. is which you think of as being a cold country. Very that's nice. So that's incredible. It's got so much warmth in it. Let's have it with some chalk. I'm going to try it with right. some dairy chocolate. Or... We'll try the plain first, because if you try the dairy first, then your palate will cloy. Right. Mm. What have I got here? Plain. Jolly nice chocolate. Mm, good it's nice. It's out of the Granada budget. Now, you're suggesting that because that's a slightly uh, fruiter, fruitier, sweeter wine, but it works better mm. for combination. I think also the sparkle lightens up in the yeah. mouth because chocolate can become very cloying and this, this actually cleans it up. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I do think that works actually particularly well. And funny enough, because champagne, there's always that thing that you can drink champagne throughout the meal. It does work with certain chocolate. Normally the better quality chocolate, because it has more chocolate in it, as you said, mm. rather than lots of additives and sugar. But don't forget, of course, that champagne is a white wine. And we're talking red wine here because it's, it's the things, the little... Uh, insoluble yeah. minerals that you find in red wine right. that you don't find in white wine. So something like a, a sparkling Cabernet Sauvignon or a sparkling Shiraz would work. From Australia, yes indeed. I suppose we ought to try the milk now. Have you tried yeah. the milk? I have actually. I've tried the milk and the chocolate and the plain chocolate. But how often would you have this little combination here? <laughs> I mean, can we do this every day for good um, health? We could, yes. And uh, of course you'll live forever. The, the red wine clears out the, um, uh, the, the fats in the system and cleans your arteries. And the dark chocolate cleans out the other bits and makes right. sure that um, all the minerals you need are there. And, you know, you do see people drinking red wine with chocolate. If you go to a restaurant, if people don't have cheese, they go straight from main course to dessert, right. very often a chocolate dessert, and they'll drink the leftover red wine with it, which just goes to show if you've had enough of it, it doesn't really matter what it tastes like. Ah, so cunning. Very cunning. Very cunning. So, but it is red wine you've got to work on and uh, rather than the whites. But I think that's a combination that I'd like to develop and try a lot more. I think we might have to test a few more of these. I'll come back next week and bring some more. Yes. <laughs> that would be a really good idea. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, John. And now, sadly, it's time to say goodbye. Once again, it's flown past, but remember to join us again soon. Till then, take care and lots of love. Goodbye. <laughs>